Hey friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. If you read surveys nowadays, you'll find out that most people think that our culture and our country are kind of going in the wrong direction. And if you hold to a biblical worldview and, and you believe in, in the teachings of God and His Word, then you'd have to agree. A lot of the values that we have today don't match up with what the Bible teaches. But how do we respond to that as believers? I think we should talk about that on something deeper. So this culture has changed a lot in the last 20 or 30 years. And I've I've lived long enough now to see the trends and it's not good. A lot of the things that we are taught nowadays, people would have been shocked about 20 or 30 years ago. And yet now, the morality is you're not even allowed to question some of these new ideas. And these new ideas were actually found in the Old Testament and New Testament of the Bible as sinful things. The idea that, uh, you know, the marriage between a man and a woman, uh, traditional marriage, traditional family, is a good thing. Our culture doesn't seem to believe that anymore. The idea of life being sacred, human life being in the image of God and having an intrinsic value of its own whether you want it or not that's not really taught too much today Uh, sexual morality that has changed from what the Bible teaches I remember my pastor Reverend Hamill saying if God doesn't judge America then he's gonna have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah And, and there's a lot of truth to that a lot of what we're seeing today that's called the new morality, is really the old immorality. So how do we respond? One response is to say, we've got to pass laws that make people do the right thing and, and live righteous lives, or else God will judge us. The trouble is, one of the hardest things about evangelism nowadays is that people believe that Christians are just trying to make others live like Christians, that we're trying to rule their lives. And that's what some Christians are trying to do. But what's the alternative? Let's go to Genesis chapter 18 and talk about this story of Sodom and Gomorrah. In verse 20, these two angels come to Abraham and say, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of the earth do right? And the Lord says to Abraham, if there's 50 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I'll save them. And then Abraham enters into this negotiation with God. And he says, what if there's there's five less than 50? Would you destroy it because you just couldn't find those last five? And, And God says, if there's 45 righteous, I'll still spare the city. God knows exactly how Abraham is negotiating. But God says, yeah, for 45, I'll save it. And then Abraham says, well, what about 30? And he agrees with that. What about 20? He agrees with that. He said, what about 10? And God says, if there's 10 righteous, I won't destroy it. And Abraham can't bring himself to say less than 10. And we know the story. We know they couldn't find 10 righteous people. So God saved the the righteous in Lot's family, brought them out, and then he destroyed the cities because of their sin. God does judge sin. And sometimes we get the idea from this that we've got to have a righteous nation or else God will destroy us. But in reality... Is there really ever a righteous nation? I would say the answer is no. So the answer isn't that we should make everybody in America righteous. The answer is 
we've got to be those 10 that are. Second Chronicles 7 tells us another story. This is after Solomon has built the temple and dedicated the temple. And in verse 12 and following, he has a dream. The Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among the people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So instead of us trying to force other people who don't claim the name of Jesus to live according to the Bible's teachings, maybe the most important thing we can do is to be the people of God who are called by His name and humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. Do the things God calls us to do and pray for our nation. Pray for more people to come to Jesus and for their lives to be transformed as well and to see the change that God can bring. Let's pray. Father, we know we do need to humble ourselves. I pray, Father, for your church to rededicate herself to following you in every way, to go to your word and understand it and to practice it. And Father, we pray for those who don't know you, that they would find you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Love you all and hope you have a wonderful week.